Hey, so I am about to do something I have never done before. channel Raising Wellness. My name is Shelby and today I have an extra special treat for you because I'm going to be doing a before and after video and this isn't your typical weight loss before and after video. This is more of a spiritual growth before and after as I'm about to embark on my first 10 day silent Vipassana meditation retreat in Georgia. So if you guys don't know what Vipassana is, it's a meditation practice that was created by <coughs> excuse me, Buddha. <coughs> so it is practiced by a lot of Buddhists, but it can be used through all religions, through all races, through all people, through all genres of whoever you are. Vipassana is beneficial for everyone to help you really break through all those layers you may have put upon yourself, they say it as knots that you have tied in your life and in your heart and in your mind and your body and your emotional space. So it is a place to release those knots and dive deeper into the truth of who you are, the truth of what you want and the truth of um, what's no longer serving you. So a lot of people come out of, after I've talked to a lot of people, a lot of people come out of Vipassana either really angry because they held a lot of resistance towards things they didn't want to let go or they come out and radically shift their whole life um, based upon what they've learned, what they have witnessed in themselves over those 10 days. And so I'm going to take you guys on this journey. I'm about to hop in the car. My intention for this first Vipassana retreat, I plan to do more seeing how this one goes. Um, <clears throat> my, my biggest intention is to really just Find what drives me, find what gets me really excited about life, and to be better able to listen to my heart while directing choices I make in my life, career paths I want to pursue, people I want to be friends with. So just really um, cultivating the relationship with my heart again, um, and finding out what it says, and being able to trust it and move forward having a better relationship with it and being able to hear it. So <clears throat> that's my intention, kind of long, kind of lengthy. It's actually like way more summarized and short in my head. Um, so that's my intention. I'm gonna hop on the road, all my bags are packed, I had to bring blankets, I had to bring a flashlight, I had to bring bug spray, I had to bring a battery powered alarm clock. Oh, also so that you guys know, um, you are not allowed to bring books journals, you have to wear clothes that fully cover your knees and a dress and a shirt, everything that like covers everything. It's not form fitting <clears throat> so as to not distract other people. <clears throat> oh, my throat's so clogged up. Um, and you can't bring malas, you, it's not recommended to do yoga, no computers, no cell phones, no journals, no books, just you and yourself, clothes and um, stuff for your bed. So no electronics for 10 days. My boyfriend's a little bit nervous, um, which reminds me I have to leave him the emergency number. But yeah, I'll just show you guys a little bit of what I have and then I'm gonna jump onto the road. Let's see here. So this is my bag. I have my pillow blankets and then this is just clothing and stuff for the shower that's it that's all I got that's all I need and let's do it
I just got to the center. It's really cute. It's way back in the woods. You can kind of see it there. Um, and about to do this thing. I'm nervous. I will be honest. I'm nervous because I don't know what's going to come of it. But there is a lot of people here already. Um, so I'm just going to go pop in and register and... I will see you guys on the other side. Ten days later. Hey guys, so this is blurry. Let me fix that really fast. Whoop. So I just got back. There we go. Well, I'm, I'm now in my car. After 10 days practicing Vipassana for the first time at the Dhamma Patata, the Dhamma Patata, there's a sign behind me, um, center in Jessup, Georgia. And I am making this video so that you guys can learn a little bit more about Vipassana and a little bit more about the options that are out there for you to clear your mind, clear your life, feel more pure of heart, pure of mind, um, and, and live a life that is happy. Um, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I am always seeking something to help me with, um, feeling happy, feeling joy in life, and, and really being able to center my mind, like, with meditation and healthy eating, things like that, and, I feel like Vipassana has been the answer that I was looking for. Um, all the things kind of, there's a car driving by, oh, that's awkward. Everything that I've been reading, everything that I've been trying to do, everything that I've been looking to build my life towards was this, was Vipassana. It was the whole energy of it, the ideas behind it, the theories behind it, the reasons behind it, um, which it is just answered everything. And everyone's experience is different. I'm going to preface all of that, or preface comes before, I'm not sure, all of that with saying the experience is highly individual, but the technique is the same um, for every single person. So the technique, I'll go into it briefly, is a lot with breathing um, and really being able to get quiet. That's why there's the 10 days of silence, no talking, um, to really quiet the mind and be able to feel the subtleties of the body. And rather than trying to visualize a color or a god or or like a guided visualization meditation that calms you down for relaxation or to chant a mantra it is getting you in touch with the nature of your body the sensations the breathing the heartbeat that we all share but are all highly individual and it's it feels to me almost like getting back to nature, getting back to self, getting back to the natural reality of your body. And I found, again, highly individual experience, but same technique, that my imagination goes crazy. Like there was some points where I was, I totally forgot I was in the room because my imagination just could take me someplace so vivid. And while that's awesome, um, sometimes, you know, it, takes me into dark places and I follow it and follow it and follow it. So Vipassana has helped me to calm myself down, to not listen to those thought patterns and to come back into the natural reality of what is happening right now in my body based upon my breathing, my heartbeat, and my sensations in my body and on my body, on my skin. And it's just, it's brought so much clarity, so much happiness and joy and 
to any of you who are interested in Vipassana even a little bit, I say go. Stop researching right now and sign up and go because Goenka says that it's all about the experience. You can go to school, you can learn all these things, you can talk about these things, read books like I have done for so long, but you're never going to fully experience something in your individual capacity until you truly do it and truly have the experience of it. He said, um, he talks a lot of stories, they do discourses every night um, where Goenka talks and he does uh, he explains the work that you did that day and why you did it. And there was always times where, like, everyone, after we were able to talk, everyone said that they wanted to run away from the day until those discourses came and it all made so much more practical, rational sense why you're doing the work you're doing. And his the last story that he said to us, I might butcher it, but I'm going to try to tell you, is there once was a seaman... And he was on a boat, and there was a professor on his boat who every night he had loads and loads of letters after his name. So many years of study and research and taking um, courses and learning about the world. And every night the professor would talk about some kind of topic. And the seaman, he he had no school ever. He was illiterate. He had always just worked on his boat. And the professor asked him one night after a discourse that he did and was like, excuse me, sir, have you ever learned about geology? And the guy had so little schooling, he didn't even know what geology was. And the guy was like, the study of the earth that you live on, you have wasted a quarter of your life. And so the seaman felt very upset and he's like I've wasted a quarter of my life and then the next day the professor was doing another discourse another talk and I'm gonna put that down so I'm not fiddling with it um and after it he asked the seaman excuse me sir have you ever learned the topic of oceanography and the guy was like no I haven't I don't know what that is and he's like the science of the the ocean, the science of what you are on every single day that takes your boat the places it needs to go. And the guy was like, no, I've never learned about that. And he's like, oh, you've wasted half of your life. And the seaman went back and he was sad that he'd wasted half of his life. And then the next day, for sake of story, the seaman went back and the professor did another discourse. And afterwards he talked to the seaman and asked him, have you ever learned the study of meteorology? You know, the study of the wind and the patterns of the weather. And the guy was like, no, I've never learned anything about that. And he's like, you've wasted three quarters of your life. And the seaman was sad because he'd wasted three quarters of his life. And then one day, the seaman runs up to the professor and is like, excuse me, sir, excuse me, sir. Have you studied about swimology? And the guy was like, no, I don't know how to swim. And the, the seaman was like, well, this ship is sinking. So those who have the experience of swimming will be able to reach the shore in that distance. And all the others, they, they didn't have lifeboats, I guess. Um, but for sake of story, it, it really shows you that you have to have the visceral experience of something to truly understand it. That seaman knew all of those things, obviously, because he was on a boat. He lived on the water. He studied the stars and the, the wind and the sea and the weather because he had to know it because he was experiencing it. But the professor had no visceral, tangible experience with those things and at the end, obviously sunk because he didn't know how to swim. And the story or the lesson is to have the experience. So if you're at all inclined to learn about meditation, the Pasana meditation, um, the ideas of Buddha or Buddhist, um, it's not it's not a 
you know, specific religion that you're learning. It's not, it's supposed to be universal for all. That's why the experience is very different and individual, but the technique is universal. It's about becoming to universal truths of your natural self. And the Buddha's ideas that he put out into the world were, as such, they've just over time kind of gotten more sex, more sex um, of it, different religions and things like that. But the ultimate truth of the enlightened one was following this path of vipassana, understanding your body, your sensations, your breath, and to use that to heal your life. And what's really cool is that this type of meditation was first and foremost only for monks and nuns, but from Goenka's lineage, they brought it to householders, um, which I think is a term in India, but you know, the normal working person who has things to do that can't just be a monk or a nun. And I think that's what's really beautiful about this practice is that it's giving that gift. Um, I can't remember the word. <laughs> Tong Tonga? <laughs> It's like the one universal truth. I have to like write things down to remember them. Um, it's giving that gift to every single person. And I think it's really cool that this community of Vipassana is still so small, but it's ideas about everyone needs to receive this gift of meditation, needs to receive this gift of this certain practice of meditation to really live a happy life. Be happy is like Goenka's catchphrase, I guess you could say. Um, and I think it's really cool because they have, they have courses all over the world and I'll put a link down below so you can see if there's one in your area. There's quite a few in the United States and there's even one in Cuba I saw. There's one out in Hawaii. There's um, obviously out in India and over on that continent, there's quite a few. Um, but I'll put the website down below. If you're interested or if you have questions, you can comment. Um, my email's down below too. I'd, I'd love to help you guys out. But like I said, it's an individual experience using a technique that's universal. And I think that's really cool. And it was really helpful. Maybe you can see a difference in how I look in comparison to the video before this. Um, I haven't looked back because I'm only moving forwards now and I don't think I have anything else to say nope that's it if you want it if you want to try something new out I went with no idea no idea what I was getting myself into and I did it and it has helped so much and I met so many amazing people and yeah I'm going to continue my Vipassana practice when I get home. And if you guys want, I can keep you updated on that. Um, let you know how it's going. Or any other questions you have. And I'm sending you guys so much love. So many blessings. And I'll talk to you next time.